Resurrected Reformed Baptist Church, located at 2230 East 18th Street in the heart of Chattanooga, is a church that loves the Word of God and loves Jesus Christ. Through the vision of the pastor and her members, she spreads the good news of the gospel and endeavors to follow the direction of Matthew 28, 19 through 20, make disciples. Having been in existence for 23 years, God continues to bless her spiritually through expositional preaching, biblical education, missions, and discipleship. The shepherd of this flock is Elder Eddie D. Jax, born and raised in Chattanooga. Pastor Jax has been preaching for 32 years. He became a deacon in 1985, serving under Pastor Eddie R. Jax at Galilee Baptist Church. Pastor Jax accepted the call to preach in September of 1987. In 1988, he began as a youth pastor and Bible quizzing leader at his father's church, Galilee Baptist Church. In 1992, Pastor Jax became the pastor of First Baptist Lookout Mountain. He served as a bivocational pastor while working as a criminal investigator in the District Public Defender's Office. His initial pastorate at First Baptist Church of Lookout Mountain was a three and a half year assignment from the Lord. In 1996, he was led by the Lord Jesus Christ to begin Resurrected Baptist Church. His education includes study at Tennessee Temple University, Dallas Theological Seminary, and Covenant Theological Seminary. Pastor Jacks greatly benefited theologically as he was personally discipled each week by Pastor Chris Treffenstedt for 10 years or more. He has dedicated himself to a lifetime of studying God's Word and the works of many great sound Bible scholars throughout the history of the Christian Church. I present the senior pastor, elder, and teacher of Resurrected Reformed Baptist Church, Eddie Durrell Jacks. Welcome to the 23rd anniversary of Resurrected Reformed Baptist Church. I am Pastor Eddie D. Jax. I'm very thankful to be married to my lovely wife, <laughs> Tina Jax, of 36 years. I am so blessed. I have three beautiful daughters, Patrice, Tiffany, Tilia, and a wonderful son-in-law, Greg Scott, married to Tiffany. I have six beautiful grandchildren jordan jaden joshua gavin gaia and reagan so precious and dear to me as well history is god's story and the lord began writing his historic story for resurrected in April of 1996, God began this beautiful, beautiful congregation of believers, starting with 20 to 25 members, uh, under the guidance of myself and Pastor Eddie R. Jacks, who was my pastor um, and being planted under the guidance of uh, Galilee Baptist Church with Pastor Eddie R. Jacks. So this church was actually started by the Lord Jesus Christ. Our church was founded on this scripture, uh, our name as well. Romans 6, 4, we were buried, therefore with him by baptism into death, in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in the newness of life. So we are saved by grace alone, through faith alone, in Christ alone, and we stand together as a church on scripture alone. We have a high view of God, we have a high view of his word. 
all that has happened in and through Resurrected Baptist Church under the ministry of Pastor Eddie D. Jacks has been because the hand of God has been upon this great church. I am so thankful and so grateful. So let's take a peek into what God has done Amen. in and through the Resurrected Reformed Baptist Church. My lovely wife might have something she would like to say to you right now. You're more than welcome to say so if you desire. I just thank God for the insight that God gave Durham because if he had given it to me, I would have not, um, I'd have fallen or something because I just thank God for the insight that he gave to him. He told me what God wanted him to do. And I said, you lead the way, I'll follow you. Amen. And I could not have made it thus far without my precious wife. Her ministry to me uh, in our home enables me to be able to minister to this church through the preaching and teaching of God's word and shepherding of God's people. So let's take a peek into what God has done. And uh, oh, by the way, don't forget to God be the glory for the great things that he has done. Amen. We're not Israel, but there was a day when he came to us in our Egypt, dug us up by the roots, transplanted us into another country. God has been good to us. Add to that the blessings he's given us. Add to that all the prayers he's answered. Add to that the fact that he's ever with us. Add to that the fact that he loves us eternally. Add to that the fact that he meets all of our needs. Add Add to that the fact that the Son is making intercession for us right now in heaven. Add to that the fact that the Holy Spirit is making intercession for us within us. Add to that that He's coming back to get us and we will be perfected in holiness. Add to that the air you breathe, the car you drive. Add to that. God's going to do it. Add to that. You get a chance to hear the Word of God every Sunday, every Wednesday. The word of God, whether it's myself or Elder Ease preaching the word of God, you get a chance to hear the same gospel through both of us. Add to that. The only hope you have is to repent. The only salvation you have is to repent. To turn from that God that you serve. No matter how holy and accepted he might be in the eyes of society. Yeah. Repent and turn unto the true and living God. Yes, Believe upon the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. That is the only hope we've got. Thank you, Lord. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna give you an example. All right. All right, I so was in court one time, and this fellow was up before me, and the judge asked him, "Have you been here before?" He said, "One or two times." <laughs> the judge said, "Come here, Bailey. Take the end of this record." The Bailey stretched that record all the way almost around the room. <laughs> The judge started calling them off one by one. And there was nobody there that stood for him to say I would take it on for him. No. Yeah. Yeah. The judge had to, by the law, read the record. Yeah. The judge made it plain I have every right to sentence you because you are guilty. Yeah. The judge had every right to put him under the pen yes, and throw away the key and not say you are free anymore. That's right. Amen. Amen. But that's the way it is with Christ. When I think about my sin, yeah. I think about if you took the end of it, you'd be walking around the room. Yeah. But God, but, God. but Jesus Christ who died on the cross for my sin, yeah. although I had a arm full of sin, yeah. guess what? He does not come in against me yeah. simply because I am his. He took all my yeah. sin and he put on me his righteousness. Yeah. 
Elder Ease, Resurrected prayed for an elder for about two years to come alongside uh, Elder to help him adhere to church. Will you tell us how you came to Resurrected, please? Yeah. Uh, well, it's, it's interesting how God works. Uh, he works in ways that you don't see Him working. It was March of uh, 2017, and I had uh, seen on the internet on Facebook where Dr. Steve Lawson was coming to Resurrected uh, for his Bible conference and he was one that I was following at the time uh, and following Ligonier, Ligonier Ministries and at that point I said well if there's a, ever a time that God gives me liberty to, to move uh, I'm going to go and see about that church so sure enough uh, sometime later uh, actually later on that fall uh, we felt the liberty to move so I started watching uh, the website uh, and watching Brother uh, Jax and Elder Jax uh, teaching and preaching and just and was unbelievably fell in love with, with the word that, that he was teaching. Uh, something that I, you haven't heard it that way. And, and it, I could tell that it was a church that, it was, that believed in expository preaching and teaching of the word of God. Uh, didn't know anything else about the church. I just knew I could watch him on TV and I, and I could see him preaching and teaching the word of God. So whenever we had the opportunity to come, we came. Uh, came back the next week, came back the next week, and we've been here now for, for a year and a half. Uh, so at the time when we came, no one knew I was a, I was a teacher, a, a preacher of the Word of God. It worked out I was filling in for a church up uh, down in Trenton that was uh, needing a pastor, and I was just filling in for a few weeks, and that's how the pastor came to know that I was a, I was a teacher as well. So God knows what he's doing. God is the comfort in all our troubles. Tell us what the Comfort and Care Ministry does here to minister to her members. Comfort and Care Ministry is a ministry purpose on behalf of the resurrected family to develop genuine relationships and unity. That commitment to having an effective ministry promotes unity among the brother, eliminates needs, uh, feeds the poor, nurtures the sick, and gives hope to the hopeless is due to the mercy and the, all, and the power of the Almighty God. Brother Donnie, for the past year we have been studying discipleship. Why is knowing how to be Christ's disciple important? Well, I can think of several reasons why it's important, at least three from right off hand. Um, one, disciples and being a disciple, discipleship and being a disciple is important first and foremost because it's vital to the growth and development of the church. In order for the church to grow, we must have disciple and discipleship classes. Second, <clears throat> it's important because of, it shows the continuation of the incarnation of Christ. We, as the body of Christ, we are the continuation of the incarnation. So the only Jesus people is going to see is the Jesus in us. And so how is that going to take place? It has to take place through discipleship. And that's why it's important. That's one reason why it's important. And the last reason is important because we have been commissioned by God to be disciples and to go out and to make disciples, as it says in Matthew 28. So, being a disciple is, is important because of evangelization, because of the health and growth of the church. The Bible is the inerrant Word of God. Brother Morgan, how does the Sunday School embody this? Well, the Sunday School embodies the Word of God by teaching the Word of God. Sunday School is a as well as any Christian education is about making disciples. <coughs> and from that you get church goers. You want, pe you want people who regularly come to study the Word of God. And that's what we do in Sunday School. Sunday School has always been a big part of what we do here at Resurrect. Matter of fact, if you, you, you go back from generation to generation, there's always been Sunday School in the church. Always. That's one of the consistent things in the church today, Sunday School. You taught you and Sunday school is, 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 is geared. When I say it's geared, it's geared to a way that we can reach even the youngest of our, our people here at Resurrected. 
even the young people, uh, like I said before, you should, the Sunday school, you should teach the Word of God so that a four-year-old should be able to understand it. And that's what we do here. We, we geared our Sunday school lesson, our Sunday school class to the, to the, to the level of the student that we're teaching. So that all of us could come to the knowledge of knowing who Jesus is. Brother Hickman, you advocate marriage through covenant keepers. How is that advocacy being manifested at Resurrected? Well, at Resurrected, as the marriage ministry leader, along with my wife, Roslyn, and with Mike and Michelle Long, uh, we believe that uh, the same thing that we do in Covenant Keepers in trying to reduce the divorce rate and also trying to put Christ on display in our marriage. The best way to do that is to redeem the time, and we have learned to... Um, encourage one another and obey and honor the teaching that we have received at the church and uh, the best principle that we believe that we can honor that really uh, reflects the glory of God in marriage is to love and respect and we do seek to encourage one another in that way. Sister Hickman, what is Resurrected's uh, perspective towards missions? I think that our perspective falls right in line with the scripture that uh, we were looking at a few weeks ago. It is found in 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, and I'll just read that, and it will answer that question. Verse number 3, remembering without ceasing your work of faith and labor of love and patience of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ in the sight of God and our Father. The missions ministry here is endeavoring to stay in touch with our mission uh, ministries all over the world as well as here at home and we have involved our church as a whole from the smallest child to the oldest by supporting the mission trips in and out short-term mission trips as you all well know and we are excited to see God moving and growing in our church as a result of us reaching out to those who are on the battlefield for the Lord. Sister Tasha how is resurrected after school ministry at Eastside School seeking to disciple children? Well, over the past year in our midweek Bible study, Pastor and Elder Eves have been laboring and teaching us about discipleship, carrying out the Great Commission found in Matthew 28. We have been uh, consistently challenged to not only uh, cease every opportunity to engage others with the, a goal in mind to point them to Christ but to also examine our own walk with the Lord. And the Good News Club is paramount in carrying out the Great Commission, giving the opportunity to reach beyond the four walls of the church to our community to evangelize the lost. We are grateful uh, for every opportunity we've had for the past six years to teach the gospel of Jesus Christ at Eastside and uh, Clifton Hills Elementary School uh, each week throughout the school year. Our goal as the body of Christ is to teach them who God is, who we are without Christ, and what God has done for us by sending His Son to be the Savior of the world. This opportunity also has given us not only to reach the young people, but to work hand in hand with the staff in mentoring students, as well as providing the necessity of clothing for our children. Sister Teresa, how is the women's ministry complementing resurrected vision? Well, I think the vision of the church is that we as a community of believers in Jesus Christ will come together and form um, genuine relationships with one another. And I think that women's ministry is ideal for that, that we all come together as ladies, as mothers, daughters, sisters, as teachers, and we seek to form those relationships with one another. Not just that we have them here, but in acts of service to our community, that we would take that out into our community and build relationships with the people that we come in contact with. And in doing so, I think that we do exactly what the church is geared towards, and that's discipleship. We disciple one another, and we disciple our community. And I think that is the heart of Ladies Fellowship. Brother Tim, how does handling God's money correctly help the church to honor Him? 
because as a the financial administrator, you have to make sure that all the financial needs are carried out correctly each month, even if the monies that come in are not enough, you have to balance what you have to make sure that the bills are paid correctly and on time, as well as being able to either set money aside or raise additional funds when you're doing uh, extra uh, activities for the church. There are over 150 Psalms that tell God's stories and sing praises to Him. Resurrected has a strong music ministry. Sister Christian, how does that praise work here? Well, Colossians 3.16 says, Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, in all wisdom, teaching, and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. Sing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. I think we take that to heart here at Resurrected because we minister in song, but we also minister through teaching through song. God's word is the substance of our songs. Sister Brummett. Yeah. Resurrected loves her children. How does the Awana ministry come alongside parents in discipling the children? Well, the Awana ministry is to teach boys and girls um, to love the Lord, uh, to train them and bring them up in the uh, Word of God and train them to serve Him. Um, so that's what we do every week. We're constantly, uh, we repetition, uh, repeating the scriptures and breaking it down to them. It's about training them so that they can serve the Lord and learning how to follow Him through His Word. Brother McGavin, why is media important in the work of this church? Media is important because this is how we're able to get the gospel beyond the four walls of the church and even beyond this community out to the whole entire world. You can find any of our sermons on any of your favorite podcast services. Just look for Resurrected Reform Baptist Church, the full name. Also on YouTube, Resurrected Reform Baptist Church. And we're able to share the gospel through these means to everyone. There are people literally around the world who give feedback that they were able to watch the sermons, listen to the sermons, and able to experience the gospel through the preaching and teaching that comes from this church. So the media ministry is able to make sure that the whole world gets the gospel and so we continue to try and strive to do that. Mr. Hughes, how does building maintenance glorify God? Building and maintenance glorify God in uh, health, safety, and comfort. And also uh, makes the service more uh, drawful by having uh, adequate ventilation, uh, AC units, uh, so people will be, the entire membership will be comfort in the service.